right today our topic is petrosal nerves petrosal nerves mean there is greater petrosal nerve there is deep petrosal nerve and there is lesser petrosal nerve many times students are very confused among these three they are unable to differentiate so today we will discuss them with clear illustrations now first of all why these nerves are called petrosal nerves the reason being that these nerves pass through a bone which is called petrous part of temporal bone they pass through the petrous part of temporal bone petrous is very hard petrous part of the temporal bone is very hard it's stone like right and within the petrous part of temporal bone there is a middle ear structures and there is inner ear structures and some nerves including the petrosal nerves right so let's draw some diagrams and then i will discuss all these nerves one by one and in the end i will compare and contrast right so first of all i will make a small diagram here it's anterior cranial fossa and here it is middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa right and here is your yes beautiful nose and other component of your head and neck now as you know there is the anterior cranial fossa and here it is middle cranial fossa in the middle cranial fossa this part of the bone i am going to draw right this part of the bone this is petrous part of temporal bone i have made a very simple diagram right i am going to draw in magnification is that right now let's draw it here secondly not only i will draw on the side you can see this bone from the top also in the cranial cavity if you're looking at the cranial cavity from the top let me make a diagram like that that this is your nose and yes again anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa and here is yes middle ear middle ear and here is also external auditory canal and middle ear right and as we will see later that from here internal what acoustic meatus approaches the middle ear and this passes through the petrous part of temporal bone this is all petrous part of temporal, temporal bone and what is this middle ear cavity is embedded within the petrous part of temporal bone is it right and this is internal acoustic meatus and some important foramina here here is for, okay i will make foramina with different color right this is foramen lacerum here is foramen oval and here is foramen rotundum other foramina i will not draw now for us right now for today's lecture uh, foramen lacerum is important and foramen oval, oval is important for us is that right now this structure this one and this one this i am going to draw over here in magnification is that right first of all i will draw the ear in this diagram if i show the ear that is middle ear cavity that will be shown like that right middle ear cavity this is the anterior wall this is the posterior, posterior wall floor this is the medial wall medial wall as promontory and this is the floor anterior. this is floor anterior wall what is this posterior. posterior wall medial wall and i have not shown here but actually here this is the lateral wall now i am going to take this middle ear from here and going to draw it here and in reference to that in reference to this structure and this structure i will draw the rest of the structures so let's start from here that here is your middle ear cavity right this is its medial wall you know medial wall is a very important uh, protrusion which is called promontory right here it is its posterior wall right i have broken it here and here i have opened up yes which wall interior wall. interior wall okay i will show it here 
that interior wall is let me make interior wall a little different let me draw the interior wall like that right so you know this is the this is facing that side this is interior wall what is this medial, medial wall this is posterior wall and here it should be floor it should be floor this is the floor of middle ear is that right any question no this is the right side now from here a canal come and this canal is internal acoustic, acoustic meatus right internally acoustic meatus approaches the middle ear from posterior cranial fossa it is a tunnel within the petrous part of temporal bone it moves moves forward and laterally look here this is internally acoustic meatus it is moving forward and laterally and approaching the medial wall of middle ear cavity interior middle ear cavity medial wall interiorly so now come here am i clear now now from here i can show you this structure now these foramina now how we are going to talk about this foramina what I have done I have removed a piece from here this part now this part you understand I've put it here and enlarged it any confusion about this part from where it came everyone is clear don't tell me later you don't understand that's a piece of cake it's a piece of bone basically right so again I will repeat from where I've taken this piece to make it more clear this was middle ear cavity right I have taken this piece from here right like that am I clear yes. this piece and of course what should be here foramen yes. lateron yes. foramen yes. oval am I clear so we can draw it here yes. is that right so here should be foramen lateron and here should be foramen oval these foramen are very important when you are trying to talk about these petrosal nerves is that right yes. now few more structures I would love to mention in the foramen lacerum in the interior wall of foramen lacerum there is a canal which is going interiorly and this is called pterygoid canal this is passing within the bone right and now from here it emerges from the bone and this is what pterygoid canal is that right where it is opening it is opening into pterygopalatine fossa okay now let me show you exactly this pathway in this diagram later on I will put the nerves this is middle canal fossa right here was the ear am I clear this was what internal meatus right this was petrous part of temporal bone here I was showing foramen lacerum and on the back of foramen lacerum this is here opening carotid canal and this part of foramen lacerum is closed by the cartilage right and here was yes what was this pterygoid canal and where it was opening it is opening yes here for a rotundum opening and this is yes and this structure here this is pterygopalatine fossa this is pterygopalatine fossa now here is foramen lacerum and 
in the interior wall of foramen lacerum there is a bony canal which is approaching tirigo palatine fossa which is itself fossa is itself a space below the lower part of the below the posterior part of the orbit behind the upper part of maxilla and enter inferior to the anterior can uh, middle canal fossa right now come here so where it is opening i will show it here yes what was it tirigo palatine fossa the structure right now let's start working on it now we have to bring the neuronal fiber first we will study greater petrosal nerve then we will study deep petrosal nerve and then we will study lesser petrosal nerve you have a question yes so where is foramen rotundum in relation to that diagram foramen rotundum you have to move the diagram more interiorly it should be somewhere here right how come look here yes nose right what is this not cavernous sinus salatrachica right here was the ear now when you put the foramina you have to put the foramen here here was the ear now when you put the foramina here is foramen lacerum here is foramen ovel foramen spinosum here is foramen rotundum and here is superior orbital fissure right i have taken a plate the plate which i have shown you this plate plate of the bone i have taken actually a piece of floor of the middle cranial fossa which is showing the ear underneath crane what is this foramen lacerum foramen ovel that's it this structure and from here this canal was going towards tirigo palatine fossa are you clear now good come back here yes and of course a very important structure uh, under the yes what is this jugular yes jugular bulb you know jugular foramina and jugular bulb which is passing under the under the floor of the middle ear cavity clear any question about this these landmarks we can put the nerves now there we will put the petrosal nerves there okay but before really i go further let me draw the pons and medulla also here is the pons and here is the medulla right and here is medulla oblongata now first i will talk about greater petrosal nerve right what kind of fibers are there and where is exact location of greater petrosal nerve right actually greater petrosal nerve carries a uh, parasympathetic preganglionic fibers greater petrosal nerve carries parasympathetic preganglionic fibers which are coming from the superior salivatory nucleus so here is your superior salivatory nucleus and here the lesser petrosal nerve later on i will show you lesser petrosal nerve also has parasympathetic preganglionic fiber but lesser petrosal nerve has those fibers from inferior salivatory nucleus it means in the lower part of pons and upper part of the medulla there are two salivatory nuclei there is superior salivatory nucleus and inferior salivatory nucleus superior salivatory nucleus is giving fiber to the yes for the greater petrosal nerve and later on we'll talk about inferior salivatory nucleus gives fiber for the lesser petrosal nerve right now fibers which are supposed to reach preganglionic parasympathetic fibers which are supposed to reach to the greater petrosal nerve they start from here they go along the seventh nerve which nerve seventh nerve again they are going with which nerve seventh cranial nerve right and yes these preganglionic fibers go with one component of the seventh cranial nerve and this component of the seventh cranial nerve is called nervous nervous 
intermediates nervous intermediates so these fibers yes they are part of the nervous intermediates and they are going towards the geniculate ganglion now here is geniculate ganglion right but geniculate ganglion has the cell bodies of sensory fibers and seventh nerve nervous intermediate part not only have secretomotor parasympathetic preganglionic fiber but it also has sensory fibers which sensory fibers some sensory fibers are coming from the tractus solitarius and they are related with the taste, taste. right these taste fibers and these fibers have their cell bodies in geniculate ganglia and some other sensory fibers which include the yes general visceral efferents and taste fibers were special visceral efferent so general visceral efferent and special visceral efferents both of them are going from here and they have their cell bodies here afferent afferent yes you are right very right these are sensory uh, special visceral afferent you are right and general visceral afferent sensory now these two are sensory pathways is that right now these two sensory fibers in which uh, special visceral afferents are taste fibers which are bringing the taste and general visceral afferent fibers they are bringing other visceral sensations from the soft palate and other area now these sensory fibers go along with the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the from the superior salivatory nucleus and all of them together all of these fibers together you know these fibers together as a bundle they are called nervous intermediates these are called nervous intermediates and this nervous intermediates reaches geniculate ganglia right and there is also motor fibers from seventh nerve we will not discuss right now here now these sensory fibers and preganglionic parasympathetic fiber both of them as part of nervous intermediates they reach up to which ganglion geniculate ganglion now here is very important to understand in the geniculate ganglion these preganglionic these preganglionic parasympathetic fibers do not relay they do not relay and even they don't have their cell bodies here they just pass through it they are going to pass through it but these sensory fibers they have their cell bodies here they have their cell bodies here now these fibers these parasympathetic fibers some of them go backward with the facial nerve but some of them through a canaliculus within the petrous bone within the petrous bone there is a this is a canaliculus within the petrous part, part of temporal bone these parasympathetic some of these parasympathetic fibers from the geniculate ganglion they go through this to the middle cranial fossa now they have entered into middle, middle cranial fossa right and again all the preganglionic pre parasympathetic fibers don't go into this now some of them go along with the facial nerve proper and some of them separate from here along with some sensory fibers some taste fibers right they pass through a tunnel they separate from which area <laughs> nervous intermediates approaches geniculate ganglia right from the geniculate ganglion a branch is given this branch has preganglionic parasympathetic fibers and taste fibers and some other sensory fibers right now this bundle of neurons it will pass through a bony tunnel of the petrous part of temporal bone and it will go upward forward and eventually it emerges into middle cranial fossa in the middle cranial fossa these fibers okay let me draw here for a man lesserum 
and forum and oval let me draw forum and oval here and forum and lacerum here now these fibers once they enter here now they approach through a groove they approach where foramen lacerum right these fibers approach foramen lacerum is that clear now the point where they emerge here here they will find some sympathetic fibers approaching them these are preganglionic parasympathetic and these are mainly taste fiber right here is internal internal carotid artery also now internal carotid artery later later on i will tell you in detail internal carotid artery has a sympathetic plexus around it right and from this sympathetic plexus some fiber also move anteriorly towards the tv guide canal now these fibers these fibers which has sympathetic right these fibers these are called deep petrosal nerve and these fibers fuse with the other fibers preganglionic parasympathetic and with the taste fibers and the all of them make now one bundle is that right all of them make and they appear into tirigo palatine fossa now actually when these preganglionic fibers were going right in the beginning i told you all these sensory fibers along with preganglionic parasympathetic fibers they were making this bundle which was approaching from here up to the geniculate ganglion, ganglion. this was called nervous intermediate right now these fibers from the geniculate ganglion these preganglionic parasympathetic fibers and along with the taste and other sensory fibers when they are approaching to the what is this middle ganglion fossa right this bundle is given another name and what is the name of this bundle this bundle is called greater petrosal nerve what is the name of this bundle greater petrosal nerve so greater petrosal nerve reaches up to foramen lacerum there it meets with the deep petrosal nerve and both of them together yes both of them together make another bundle of nerve and this bundle of nerve is nerve to tirigate canal the other name for this nerve to tirigate canal is vidian nerve what is it called vidian nerve now listen carefully from this point from geniculate ganglion up to foramen lacerum where deep petrosal nerve meets the other fibers these fibers are called greater petrosal nerve so what is greater petrosal nerve the greater petrosal nerve is a branch given off from geniculate ganglion it starts from geniculate ganglion greater petrosal nerve passes through a bony tunnel which is called hiatus for greater petrosal nerve through this hiatus greater petrosal nerve emerges into middle cranial in the floor of middle cranial fossa in the floor of middle cranial fossa greater petrosal nerve moves medially and approaches foramen lacerum in the foramen lacerum where the, you know foramen lacerum has cartilage lower part it is full of cartilage in the foramen lacerum greater petrosal nerve fuses with the deep petrosal nerve and once greater petrosal nerve and deep petrosal nerve fuse together this fused bundle of neurons enter into tirigate canal and now this fused nerve is called nerve of tirigate canal which moves forward and eventually it emerges into tirigo palatine fossa it emerges into tirigo palatine fossa is that clear any question up to this any confusion no 
Now, let me show this greater proposal nerve in another aspect. 